together and we are going to hopefully get a newer bigger one out and as a result there's a change in binding energy and that binding energy is going to give off energy as we saw before so let's just go through that idea um, here so uh, let's say for example we have two hydrogens okay so two hydrogens right down the bottom here really low binding energy or no binding energy whatsoever especially if um, we're talking about just normal hydrogen so if we're talking about a hydrogen one one and then we've got another one because we're going to put them together and the idea is we put them together and we will hopefully form something a little bit bigger Um, now, obviously, this is a very kind of initial process for um, fusion, and this process is quite complicated in, in total, but for all intents and purposes, what ends up happening here, we form a deuterium, which is H2 and a, um, a 1. So it's still hydrogen, but it's got 2 in its center core here. And as you can probably imagine, we're going to lose some positivity as a result of this as well, because we've uh, effectively turned one of these uh, protons into a neutron. But we shan't worry about that too much. We're looking here at the effect of increasing the binding energy when we put these two together. So when we put these two together, you'll notice what happens here is it shoots up pretty quickly. And so the change we're getting here is from two things to one thing. Now, in this case, where there is literally zero binding energy, because these aren't bound to anything. This is just a single hydrogen proton running around, so it's completely unbound. Um, it's going to jump up quite significantly, and the change in energy is going to be a lot more significant than what we observed when we saw the fission event over here. Because you notice that the increase is very small, whereas here, look at that jump. Absolutely massive. So that jump is absolutely huge. And so what ha what's happening for the most part is we've got a situation where we are um, putting these two and we are going to, again, we're going to increase the binding energy. And just like before, if you increase the binding energy, you make them more bound. And you've effectively, you'd need to put more energy in to separate these than you had them because these were already separated. So you've had to put them together. So you have to put more energy in to actually separate these now if you wanted to separate them. So hence, we've made it that idea of colder. OK, so it's kind of we'd like make them colder again. We've taken energy. And so as a result, we have a change in total binding energy, which is going to be equal to the energy released. So we're going to release energy as a result of this reaction. And what then happens, obviously, we can then relate that still to the change in mass times c squared. Now, what you might find odd about this one is that we have still got a change in mass. We got a change in mass when we reduced to two different things, and we're getting a change in mass when we are turning it into one thing. And yes, that will happen. So we're still getting a change in mass. It's still going to get lighter overall because that mass has turned into energy which was the difference in the binding energies that were there. I'll say that again. We've lost energy. So we've lost mass when we go from here to here. Overall, as of comparing this side with this side, we've lost mass. That is equal to the energy that's given off as opposed to with the M delta mc squared. And obviously, change in binding energy based on the curve that we have here. So that's fusion. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about the kind of finer points of fusion because I think it can be something that uh, gets easily overlooked, especially when it comes to the, the finer points of understanding fusion. So in this video, in the rest of this video, we're going to look now at the 
um, concept of fusion, just quickly, not uh, in a great, uh, great amount of detail. But let's look at the, the concept we already kind of were peddling there. That we're going to fuse two positively charged nuclei, this is our two hydrogens. Now, this is going to be tough to do, as you can imagine, because these are both positively charged and they will repel. So, um, they will repel each other. But obviously, like magnets and like any charges, you can force them together. And the resultant electrostatic force, as long as we have greater force than that electrostatic repulsion that they're getting. So at the moment, this is electrostatic repulsion because of the positive charges. And so what happens? How do we actually get these to fuse them? Well, believe it or not, there's another force that comes into play when these two get close enough to each other. And it's called the strong nuclear force. And it's a nuclear force that's actually, we're going to look at uh, very fundamentally uh, when we look at the structure of protons and neutrons, which are made out of quarks in the next part, uh, next few videos. But there is a strong nuclear force that now acts to attract these to each other. But you just have to get them close enough because the strong nuclear force does not act to infinity like, like this one does. What actually happens is the strong nuclear force is attractive at very close distances. But it's also repulsive at slightly further away. Well, the issue with that, obviously, is that we don't actually notice this uh, repulsive force when they're slightly further away because the electrostatic is so much bigger. Um, so we don't really worry about that. And uh, But we do notice that the strong nuclear force that brings these together is attractive when you bring them close together. That's an important point to make that it is repulsive and attractive dependent on the distance that is there. So for all intents and purposes, um, there's some, some key facts that you need to do there. And obviously, it's like we said, once they get close enough, then they join together and other kinds of strange, miraculous, weird and wacky things happen. Um, and we'll talk more about those in, in lesson when we look at fusion and we look at the structure of quarks and the changing of properties um, of protons and neutrons to actually allow these things to occur. Um, so that's just your base understanding of what's going on with fusion and we will go more into that in a later video um, where we explain what's happening here inside.